Bocobozo.com is proud to have with us as our guest for an exclusive interview, guitarist from Seven Dust, Clint Lowry. Clint, thanks for giving us a couple minutes. My pleasure, brother. My pleasure. How you doing, man? Real good. Real good. Thanks. So, since rejoining Seven Dust, how do you think the band is gelling right now? And if you can, talk a little bit about your return to the band. <laughs> man, everything's good. I mean, you know, we've been out touring this record pretty much since the beginning of the year, even before the record came out in April. And everything's good, man. We've got a good you know, set list put together, and uh, everyone's got a good attitude. And you know, the fans have been really cool, and we've enjoyed you know, playing some new songs with the new record. And basically just doing what we always have done, you know? You guys just wrapped the Carnival of Madness tour with Shinedown, Chevelle, a couple other bands. Can you talk a little bit about the summer tour? And do you prefer playing the bigger amphitheater shows and festivals or the more intimate headlining clubs? I mean, we enjoy doing both. I mean, you know, there's, there's good and bad with both. You know, of course, you know, you play bigger places, you're playing with more people, and you get exposure to, on tours like Carnival Madness, you get exposure to people that ordinarily wouldn't come see your band. And, you know, I think it's great. I mean, us, you know, at the level that we're at, that we've always been at, is we're real comfortable in the in the clubs and being, you know, face to face with a lot of the people, and you know, so that's just kind of like our home. But anytime we do the bigger tours, you know, we kind of feel like our music is kind of geared toward, you know, there's kind of a big audience, kind of big show, kind of motif, and that's, that's kind of like what we like, what you know, we enjoy doing. So I mean, there's good and bad with both, man. I mean, you know. Of course, it's everyone's dream to play in front of a bunch of people in a huge arena or amphitheater, you know. But we love the small club, too. There's nothing like that connection. Yeah, I was a little surprised that you guys were second on the bill. It was still light out when I got there, and, uh, and Seven of us took the stage. Oh, yeah. Early morning set. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the Hard Drive Live Tour? You just stopped here locally in New Jersey on Tuesday, October 12th at the Starland Ballroom support from 10 years and since October. How did this tour come together and why these bands supporting? Um, you know, it's basically just was the natural step. We just did, you know, 10 years, was, you know, under the same management. We're friends with those guys. And um, I'm not really sure how the hard drive connection got, you know, as far as serious radio connecting with it. But, you know, we love them. They've been big supporters of us from the beginning. And from, you know, as far as they're, you know, we've been around longer than that, you know, than serious radio. But it's been... Uh, you know, it was just a natural thing, and they, they, you know, said that they wanted to promote it, and we, we obviously will endorse them because they help us out so much. And, and uh, you know, ten years is great. Uh, New, Revol New Revolution, they've toured with us before, and a bunch of good guys. And you know, since, since October, I, I had, you know, I haven't had the chance to hang out with them or watch their set yet. But, um, they seem like cool enough guys, you know. So I, I'm not sure. I don't really book, you know, as far as the, the openers and stuff. You know, I know ten years is something we really wanted outside of that it's just like you know people just trying to jump on tours you know and we welcome it absolutely absolutely what can a non-fan expect from a live seven dust show um you know it's really loud obviously and a lot of energy and we just try to um you know if you've never been, been to a seven dust show you got you know 12 or 13 years of history there between a, a fan base and a band. So there's a really kind of like a, a little family reunion kind of vibe, you know. It's like everyone, these people we've grown up with them. So you, you see a really, if, you're not, if you've never been to a seven show, you really see a bond between a band and its audience. And, you know, that's always cool to to see that kind of relationship because it's, it's the diehards are always, man, they're just unbelievable. And you know, they're, they're our life's blood. Definitely got that vibe, especially in New Jersey the other night. The crowds in New York and New Jersey, how do they differ from the crowds down south? Um, they're not that much different, man. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, being from the south, you think we would have, I mean, we have like Orlando. Orlando is a huge market for us, so it's kind of the same energy as Orlando and New Jersey, and, and you know, it's the accent's different, obviously, but, you know, the, the attitude and... You know, New York's got an edge to it that, you know, in Jersey, there's an edge to it that we, for some reason, man, we just bonded with that, with it. You know, being from the South, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think the connection would be so strong, but we just really enjoy that, the grit and the, the, the realistic kind of things that, that, uh, you know, people in that, that Jersey, New York area have. I love it, man. It's just a straight shooting kind of attitude. And there's people, you know, it's like, 
in L.A., you play there, and people just fold their arms, and everyone's too cool. And, you know, Jersey, New York, people just get into it, man. They love their heavy music, and we, we love playing there for them. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you firsthand, that crowd definitely ate it up. What one song would you play for a first-time listener to say, this defines us as a band? Man, I would probably just go all the way back to the beginning, either Bitch or Black. You know, that, that was like the, the whole dynamic of what we are. There's like a heavy vocal, and then there's a the John soulful vocal, and then there's the, the, the groove of, of the music that we've always had. I think either one of those songs is like a perfect way to introduce ourselves you know, on the scene, and and it still rings true today. You know, that's that's pretty much what we are. Those two songs, Black and Bitch. You know, they just they all they, they encompass everything we are. How do you think the band has managed to stay so relevant and so successful for over a decade? Um, I don't know, man. I think it's a lot to do with you know the consistency factor. You know, we we put out records pretty often, and we tour a lot, and we've connected with a lot of people it's like you know we're always we come through a lot of the same towns you know and we build these relationships with people and i think the fact that we didn't really blow blow up you know you know back in like 98 and stuff and when a lot of bands were blowing up real big it's kind of saved us in the, in the long run you know we we didn't hit that huge peak that some of the bands did but then we're still around so it's like i would rather have a longer career and stable career and you know then then be a flash you know and then just be gone, you know, but some bands will come, they're, they're huge for like a year, and then they're gone forever, you know, so I think the fact that we as a band respect and love it to one another and, you know, and treat each other with respect, it, it, internally that makes us survive, and then the fans are the, the, the second half of that as far as them still coming to the shows, you know. Has it been a conscious decision by the band to release albums so frequently? Because they're all pretty consistently excellent. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's it's a lot of variables. It's like, as a band like us, we have to tour to survive. So we have to have new product out, you know, every year or two to kind of not burn things out. And with us, you know, to, doing records, you know, I, I think it's, you know, back in the day, it wasn't anything, you know, special for a band to release an album a year. You know, I don't understand what... Personally, why it takes so long for bands to do new, you know, do new records. I mean, sometimes they'll spend like NASA, you know, they'll get NASA and they get billions of dollars in a tricycle record, you know, and it ends up sounding like a pretty cool record, you know. I, I don't understand what takes so long. You know, if you're creating music, you should be able to do it every year, you know. Amen, brother. Amen. All right, let's talk about the new album, Cold Day Memory, dropped in April, marked your return to the band. Can you talk a little bit about your contributions on the album and how making the new record was different from some of the prior albums the band released? Um, you know, I, I was gone for three records, so on this one, um, I just really wanted to contribute, you know. I wanted to put some, uh, you know, put my two cents in on, on, on the album. And, you know, the guys, I mean, you know, my hat's off to them. They did three records pretty much straight in a row, and they, you know, self-produced and took a lot of the responsibility on themselves. And I just, my main objective was just to fit back in, you know, and, and kind of work with the system that they had while I was gone and and just kind of contribute from there. And, you know, I mean, we I was together with, you know, with the band for five, you know, five records before. So we had a system, we had a formula, so it wasn't, like, really hard to, get back in, but I mean, this album, we just wanted to, you know, to get the, the actual spirit back that we had when we first got together, and, and we wanted to get a producer that it was an outside entity that could kind of help guide us when we started flipping into some weird areas, you know, and you know, a lot of times it's good to have an outside perspective on, on things, you know, we get really attached to it as a musician. It's uh, It's been said that this record is a return to the band's roots. Why do you think that is? I just think that, um, I don't know, I think that we purposely wanted to, you know, not hide away from the thing that makes us seven us, you know. I mean, there's like a certain thing that bands do, and they'll try to change a lot of things about themselves, and, you know, we're, we're just, we were just like, let's just do a good seven us record. What do we do well? You know, we, we have really good, you know, we you know, very connected with the drummer, the, you know, the, the guitars and drums are, you know, one of the same, a lot, and a lot of the riffs, and, like, you know, that, that's what we do musically, we're a very rhythmic kind of band, and, 
you know, when LaJon's a singer, we let him sing, and, you know, there's, there's other vocal layers that we put on it with Morgan and I, but, you know, everyone's, we just kind of let ourselves be, you know, be seven to us. That's what we are. We're not going to be Led Zeppelin. We're not going to be, you know, Meshuggah. We're not going to be anything. We're going to be us. So that, that's what we just tried to do for this record. You have a favorite song on the album? Yeah, I like Splinter. Um, I think Splinter's a really cool. Yeah, another song no one really talks about is Nowhere. I think it's it's a pretty pretty cool song for us. It's a little different than what we used, you know, used to do, but it's got a cool element to it. I like it. Splinter, Nowhere, In This Coming is cool. It's a really traditional seven death song, and you know, Strong Arm Broken is definitely the hit, you know, one of my favorites as well. So has Seven Us continued to write new material throughout the summer? And when can your fans expect the next new album? I mean, it's going to be soon. I mean, you know, we're going to do this until the spring or the summer and probably start next fall, you know, maybe a year from now, like getting it really locked in and, and tracking it and stuff. I mean, we're going to start writing for it, you know, in the spring. So, you know, again, I, I want to be very prepared. I want to do a really you know, metal influenced album, you know, we get labeled a lot of different things. You hear hard rock, but I want to, I want to do more metal, straight up old school metal, you know, music with it, with LeJean singing on top of it. I think it'd be cool. Awesome. And just, yeah, it'd be cool. Awesome. Awesome. Now I just want to ask you a couple of local questions. You guys are the ultimate touring band. And as a big time fan of yours, since the first time I saw you guys at Woodstock 99, I've, I've probably seen you play at least 15 different venues just in the Northeast alone. Do you have a favorite place to play? Um, no, man. I mean, there's not any. There's no favorite place. I mean, you know, there's favorite areas. I mean, like, like, you know, obviously New York and New Jersey, man. Those are great places for us. Boston's been good. Chicago, um, you know, some of those off the beaten path kind of places are really cool to play, and you know, that, that don't get a lot of shows and these weird you know, witness protection program type places, you know, these people are dying, you know, they don't get shows, and, you know, you, they appreciate it. So, I mean, there's not, there's no particular place, you know, I've, I've made the mistake of calling, you know, naming a couple places, my favorite places before, and then other places get pissed off. So everywhere, you know, I'll be politically correct on that. Do you have any memories of any specific shows in the New York area? Yeah, man, I, I remember playing, you know, shows at Hammerstein Ballroom, man. I mean, that that was, one of the best, coolest venues, I think, you know, for us, because we used to pack it out, and it was a really cool vibe there, man. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of cool New York shows, that, but I always, about, I tend to, to look back at that one the most. You know, we played a few of them that were really good there, and, but, um, you know, obviously we played Urban Plaza and Rocks, you know, to different places, but um, that, you know, Hammerstein's always been a, a cool place for me. Any specific places the band likes to hit when they're in the area, like bars, restaurants? I mean, New York is just, I mean, it's the, it's the best city in the world, man. I mean, it's, there's, it's always changing. There's different places, you know, I mean, different areas. I mean, we haven't been able to actually hit the city in a while, man, so I'm sure there's a bunch of places. I mean, anywhere you go, man, there's always something going on there, at, you know, any time. So there's no specific, man. The food's amazing. The bar's amazing. It's just crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. So is there anything else you want to add for localbozo.com? No, just uh, thanks for the support, and uh, thanks for checking out the record if you haven't. Pick it up. Awesome, awesome. Well, check out 7 for more touring info and more information. Thanks so much, Clint, for giving us a couple minutes for localbozo.com. You got it, brother.